Welcome to Beerland Ministries on this beautiful Sunday morning here at Ritflay View in the eastern side of Pretoria, southeast, and uh, we welcome you with us. We ask that you uh, also participate and be part of the service through your praise and worship with us. Open up your spirit, open up your heart, be prepared to receive from the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit this morning and from the Word of God that goes out from uh, uh, the heart of God that He hath laid upon my heart, upon my spirit, that I must minister to you this morning. So uh, be ready, be ready for a, a great time in the presence of the Lord. Can I get up my screen soon? I want to ask you that uh, if you're on the stream, please share the stream and to your friends and let them come on as well, be part of the service. Maybe there's someone in need, maybe there's someone that needs to hear a word from the Lord this morning. Share the stream and uh, let them also be part, of, uh, your, those who you send it out to and give them the opportunity also communicate with us. Why don't you give us a, uh, uh, why don't you give us a greeting on, tell us who you are on Facebook this morning with us, and we can also respond to that uh, and welcome you with us. Maybe mention your name if you'd like. If you don't like us to mention your name, just say don't mention my name. <laughs> but uh, we would just love to do this to, to, to let you feel part of the service this morning as if you are with us in this same building. But we also uh, believe that the presence of the Lord will reach out to where, where you are right now. And um, so we are now going to give over to our music team to lead us into praise and worship and uh, be part of this, participate. Um, God loves to be worshipped. If we put, lift up our hands, it's a sign of surrendering. It's a sign of worship. If we clap our hands, the Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Uh, clap your hands unto the Lord. So praise and worship touch the heart of God. And that's something that draws his attention and his presence into our midst. Uh, that's why I, I, I uh, recommend that wherever you are, also, to tap into praise and worship and touch the heart of God through reaching out with your heart and your spirit and your whole being, your soul, your mind to Him in praise and worship. Amen. Let us hand over now to Jamie and Nisha. I'll see, uh, my, I couldn't see anything on the screen now. They're busy with the technical uh, technicality here so that I can uh, communicate and respond to you through your, through your comments. Also give us a like or, as I said, uh, share, please. So let us praise and worship the Lord, God Almighty. Amen. Yeah. 
brothers in the presence of our God. Follow him, don't Jesus go home. God, God has given. Don't lend your ears to God to stop. He will lose a faith in home. Don't fall into temptation. Don't lose your soul salvation. Don't have your heart for nation to the
This is amazing This is a
heard the sacrifice can be made It's not It's not And God sat down from his throne And gave his life to us He could have wiped us from the earth He could have taken us So I'll start a new game But he didn't Gave his son. He gave his own son and says, I love thee. I love these people made of clay, of which my breath is in them. Lord, what greatest sacrifice it was. And we can get a glimpse unto Moses. You said, I cannot show my face to you. I will only show you my back. For no flesh shall see me and live for Roshana. Because you are the almighty God, the light. Hallelujah. The bright shining light on Augusta. Hallelujah. We praise and worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Na la la mande, la 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 ba na masiru la lama, gorobo shitelebe. Right where you are, hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, Jesus, Jesus, I reach out to you. I reach out to you this morning, hallelujah, to come and touch me, to come and heal me, to come and save me, to come and deliver me. Robro di skara la mande. Hallelujah. He's faithful and he's true. And he's able to do what he says in his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Rabrada de Sada Dali da Sonto. Robrodolios Khan. Lemrini Nindis. 
He's worthy of all of our worship. He's worthy of all of our praise. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. We lift up your holy name, Lord. We lift up your holy name. Lord Jesus, this morning, I ask that you would touch my lips and my spirit to speak forth your word. Oh, Lord, I sit in him indeed in such a manner that it will penetrate in the hearts, into the hearts of the people, into the heart of the listener. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the glory, we give you the honor in the name of Jesus. We welcome you once again on our Facebook stream. And I ask you again that you would share and that you would like our stream and give us a comment. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I also want to welcome our guests this morning in our studio. And I also want to put out this invitation. We are in, in situated in uh, Ritzley View, at the southeast side of Pretoria. And uh, that's where we are broadcasting from. And we would like to invite you. Uh, to contact us for details so that you can if you want to come and visit us in the studio and be with us in the service although we believe that the presence of God and the glory of God is not uh, 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 restricted or limited by uh, uh, distance or uh, 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 we, we, we believe that we also have this experience that it is such a, a, a tangible anointing where we are here in this place and i believe that it's also possible for you to have that day but it still makes the difference where the saints gathers together there he will be in, his, in their presence so i put out this invitation if you would like to come and visit us we can pray for you we can minister to you also while you are here hallelujah hallelujah and or maybe you are interested in becoming part of this ministry and be, uh, become a member of this ministry um, we can also do this online and uh, reach out to us uh, uh, and make contact with us and we can uh, connect you with, with us in, in that way then so I'm going to start uh, this to minister this morning and I thank the mu musicians uh, thank you Jamie and Anisha you've done well we, we appreciate you we appreciate you Hallelujah. It makes such a difference if a music leader uh, can lead you into the presence of God. Why do you think musicians are such, uh, so much under attack? It's for this, this reason. Because they are in the forefront of the battle. Because Whenever the Israelites went out to battle, God told, told them and the leaders to send out Judah first. And Jews, Judah is the, uh, has the meaning of praise. It means praise. So praise must go first in your battle against all your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy. We praise your holy name. The title of my message this morning, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And it's got to do with salvation and deliverance this morning. I'm going to read the scripture for us this morning from the book of uh, um, John chapter 11 from verse 1. It's the story of Lazarus and when, where he was resurrected. So let me read, I'm going to read this whole part of, the, of this chapter. Now a certain man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Mary, Martha, lived. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent, forth to, uh, sent word to him saying, Lord, he, our brother and your friend, 
whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, this sickness will not end in death. But on the contrary, it is for the glory and honor of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Okay. Now Jesus laughed and was concerned about Martha and the sister and Lazarus and considered them dear friends. So even when he heard that Lazarus was dead, he stayed in the same place two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, or teacher, the Jews were only recently going to stone you, and you are thinking of going back there again. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of light in the day? Anyone who walks in the daytime does not stumble because he sees by the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the light, he stumbles. In the night, rather, he stumbles because there is no light in him, he says. He said this, and after that said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going to wake him. The disciples answered, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. However, Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was referring to natural sleep. So then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad that I was not dead. So that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, he was called Didymus, the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go too, that we may die with him. So when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to see Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning the loss of their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. While Mary remained sitting in the house, then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that wherever you are, whatever you ask of God, God will give to you. Jesus told her, your brother will rise from the dead. Martha replied, I know that you will rise from the dead. In the resurrection on the last day, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes and adheres to trust in relies on me as Savior will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me as Savior will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed and continue to believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the Son of God. He who was destined and promised to come into the world and is for you that the world has waited. After she had said this, she left and called her sister Mary, privately whispering to her. The teacher is here. And he's asking for you. She got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village. But was still in the place where Martha had met him. So when the Jews were, who were with her in the house comforting her. Saw how quickly Mary got up and left. She followed, they followed her assuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw the earth sobbing and the Jews who had come with her also sobbing, he was deeply moved in spirit to the point of anger. And the sorrow caused by death and was troubled and sick. Where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, see how he left him as a close friend. But some of them said, could not this man who opened the blind man's eyes have kept this man from dying? So Jesus again deeply moved within 
to the point of anger, approached the tomb. It was a cave and the boulder was lying against it to cover the entrance. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by the, this time there will be an offensive odor. For he has been dead for four days. It is hopeless. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe in me, you will see the glory of God, the expression of his excellence. So they took away the stone and Jesus raised his eyes toward heaven and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear and listen to me. But I have said this because of the people standing around. So that they may believe that you have sent me. And that you have made me your representative. When he had said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Out came the man who had been dead, his hand and feet tightly wrapped in burial cloths, linen strips, and with a burial cloth wrapped around his face. Jesus said to them, unwrap him and release him. So then many of the Jews who had come to be with Mary and who were eyewitnesses to what Jesus had done, believed in him. But some of them went back to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. It's such a powerful piece in the Word of God of the demonstration of his mighty power and that he has power over death and hell and Hades Lazarus come forth it has to do with salvation and deliverance as I've just read in verse 1 of John 11 it says that a certain man by the name of Lazarus was sick the sisters of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, had sent word to Jesus that their brother and the, his friend whom he, whom he loved is sick. They were like intercessors. Listen to this. They were interceding on his behalf and calling out to Jesus for their sibling and their loved one. He was sick. He had not yet died when they called unto Jesus. They had sent out word to him that they, they, they need him. And I want to use the story today as a parable or illustration of a lost soul. Sick because of sin on the way, or on his way or her way to eternal death. So the two sisters realized the illness of their brother. You also might have a sibling or a loved one who is sick spiritually. Because salvation had not yet happened in his or her life yet. They knew that Jesus had loved Lazarus. And we also know that Jesus loved all sinners. You might have a, a loved one that is far away and deep into sin. But this you should never forget. That the love of Jesus will reach out into the mightiest of clay and the deepest of uh, 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 dungeons of clay where sinners dwell. He will reach out to a sinner as deep without restriction. The only way a sinner cannot be saved is if he has passed away without Jesus. And then he might his soul would be lost. So they also knew that Jesus loved Lazarus. 
And they called for Jesus, but he did not come immediately and things got worse. And even to the point that Lazarus died. Isn't that what also seemed to happen when we pray and call out unto Jesus about our loved ones and about situations and about salvation for someone? You pray and then all of a sudden the person gets worse and even get into deeper sin or bondage. It is like God had not heard your prayers. But God is not living in time and space. God is living in eternity. And therefore one day the Lord, uh, to the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. The fact is that God hears our prayers. Just like Jesus heard the call that Mary and Martha had sent out to him, but he tarried. Even the day when uh, uh, Daniel called unto the Lord about the deliverance and the, uh, 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 of, of his people. Because of a promise that the Lord had made that the Israelites and the Jews would only be in exile for 70 years. And the time came when that time period would be, would be, would be uh, over. And Daniel prayed because he read the scriptures. But he prayed and he had to fast for 21 days. And only after, after the 21st day, the angel appeared to him and said, The first day that you prayed, God heard your prayers. And this we should know that whenever we pray, God hears us. He's not deaf. His arm is not too short. But God is not living in time. And God is not functioning in fear. And therefore, many a times he would say, and when angels would appear to the people of God, the first thing they would say is, fear not. God hears our prayers. Just like Jesus heard the call that Mary and Martha had sent out to him, but he tarried. He tarried. He knew that God had to be glorified by Lazarus life and said this sickness will not end into death but it is for the glory and the honor of God now John mentions that Jesus loved uh, uh, and was concerned about Martha and Mary and considered them dear friends we are also considered his dear friends when we intercede for our loved ones or oh, uh, or our concerns. We ought to also realize this. That Jesus loved for us. Love us. And is concerned for us. Hallelujah. When we pray. We should realize. He loves us. You see if we look in the natural. It may seem that things get worse. Even to the point of death. But Jesus considered Lazarus asleep. Beloved, if your situation looks dead, if your loved one is far away to the point that you believe there's no more salvation for that person, know this, that Jesus might just consider him or her asleep. Your loved one may seem too deep and far away into sin and bondage with no hope of, of salvation. And even other situations you are facing. Maybe it is your calling. Maybe it is a promise that God gave you and you feel like it has, it has died. There's nothing left. Jesus is only considering your dream is only considering your situation that looks dead and that might be in practical senses dead. He looks at them and that situation only as asleep. Jesus heard the call out from Martha and Mary and he is also hearing your outcry. That means that he will be coming, but it might seem too late. So 
Sometimes Jesus might even appear at the scene, but you, when, you, when he arrives and you get in touch with him, and now all of a sudden you feel his presence. But if you look at your situation, it still looks dead. Do not fear, my brother, my sister, beloved, because if Jesus is on the scene, resurrection is about to happen. The fact is that Jesus only arrived when things looked hopeless and the body of Lazarus had already decayed and smelled. His body was already in the tomb for four days. When Jesus arrived, Mary and Martha could not even believe that Jesus could call Lazarus out of the tomb. Don't lose hope and faith when your circumstances look hopeless and even as the smell of death. This is a word of God this, this, this day, in this moment, for the body of Christ. Keep your eyes on Jesus and get him on the scene because he's about to call out, Lazarus, come forth. He's the one who can and will bring life back into your situation and bring salvation to your loved one. When Jesus arrived and saw Mary sobbing, he was deeply moved in spirit to the point of anger at the sorrow caused by death. Don't think that God does not care. Don't think that Jesus does not care. It's so easy to call out and say, Lord, don't you care? He cares. My brother and sister, he cares for your situation. He cares for your loved one that's not saved, that's on its way to hell. He asked where they had laid him and also wept. Jesus has compassion on your situation. And he's weeping on your behalf. Whether it be weeping because of your unbelief. Or because of his compassion for you. He's still weeping. And we should not have unbelief in our hearts. Jesus bore our sorrow and he has compassion on us. He approached the tomb while again deeply moved to the point of anger and said to them to roll away the stone that covered the tomb. Jesus wants us actively involved in the res resurrection of the dead. You hear what I'm saying? Jesus wants us actively involved because he he, he told them to roll away the stone away from the front of the tomb. How can we roll away the stone in our own situation? We can start by forgiveness and stop condemning and judge maybe the one you are praying for. Someone once said you cannot pray for someone and judge or condemn them at the same time. Your judgment and your condemning and your... Uh, 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 your, 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 yeah, your judgment and condemning. Your words can cancel. Your words of con condemnation and of, 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 of uh, 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 judging can cancel out your prayers that you've just prayed 10 minutes ago, half an hour ago, a few days ago. Be careful what you say after you have prayed for someone. Don't judge. Don't condemn them. That's why Jesus said, we should never judge someone. If we will forgive and not judge and condemn, the stone will be rolled away from that tomb of that situation or that person. And the expression of God's excellence will be seen by the glory of God. Can I say that again? If we roll away the stone of judgment and condemnation and of our own opinions, the stone will be rolled away. And the expression of God's excellence 
will be seen through his glory. When Jesus called Lazarus out, he came out from death and the tomb. But he still was tightly wrapped in burial cloths, as the Bible said, around his hand, feet, and face. The fact is, Lazarus also had to respond to the call of Jesus to come forth. First of all, the disciples or the people around uh, that was in turmoil about the situation, they had to respond by rolling away the stone. Get rid of their judgmentalness and their uh, condemnation towards that person. And the stone was rolled away. And then that person who was in the grave had to respond to the call of God. But he was still wrapped in cloths of death. The burial cloths around his face, around his feet, around his hands. But Lazarus had to come out from the grave, from the tomb. Then Jesus said to them, to unwrap and release the man. When someone is saved, it doesn't mean that they are yet free. You see, we can so easily get excited when we pray about the situation or when we, when we pray for a loved one. And all of a sudden, there's a response. They come out from the grave or from the tomb. But what we should realize is their, del their, their, their salvation and deliverance is not the same encounter. If they respond to come out from the tomb, it means they is still death cloths that they are bound in and they need to be delivered from that so that they can be set free. When someone is saved, it doesn't mean that they are yet free. Lazarus was still wrapped in the cross of death after Jesus called him out, but Jesus told the surrounding saints to deliver him from the cloths of death. Who had to, who had to deliver uh, Lazarus from the cross of death? The disciples, the people around, those who were, interce who were interceding and praying for Lazarus. They had to unwrap him. They had to deliver him. Salvation. And deliverance is two separate experiences. Acts 19, 18. Many of those who had become believers, listen to this. Were coming, confessing, and disclosing their former sinful practices. And many of those who had practiced magical arts, collected their books, and throwing book by book in the pile began burning them in front of everyone. They calculated their value and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord concerning eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ was growing greatly and prevailing. James 5, 16, Therefore confess your sin to one another, your false steps, your offenses and pray for one another. That's why we ought not to judge others. Because we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We cannot judge someone else. If we judge someone, we will be measured by that same measure. Be careful whom you judge and what you do with your mouth towards someone else. We must pray for each other. And as I have said, you cannot pray and judge someone at the same time. You cannot intercede and judge them at the same time. Pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man or believer is able to accomplish much. When put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamic 
and can have tremendous power. You see, we have power and authority. And if we put a heartfelt prayer towards uh, uh, God for our uh, uh, siblings and our loved ones and for someone that is a lost soul, it carries weight before the throne of God. Our praise is not without substance. He carries dynamic power and has tremendous power. The power, most powerful deliverance uh, since I have seen in my life was on men's camps. Where they had an encounter with the presence of God. And they came out and opened up their whole past lives. And confessed their deeds of sin. I heard some confess murder. Yes, you don't believe me? I was there. I heard them say, I have, I'm guilty of murder. Some confessed theft on large scales. Others confessed infidelity, adultery, and even across the borders of species, committing bestiality. Some com uh, confessed sorcery and even other sodomy, etc., I have seen many come out of their previous lifestyles by deliverance and started on the path of righteousness and holiness. And many of them are still serving God faithfully. Some of them might have passed on already. I'm talking about a lot of years ago. Why are there so many children of God still bound in the cross of death of the sin of the past. Let me tell you this, my beloved brother and sister. The reason for that is because the power of sin is in its secrecy. There I've said it. The power of sin is in its secrecy. And if you keep it secret, you will stay bound. The same is true of a curse. Unless it is brought to light out into the open, it will keep you bound. The Bible says that he who conceal or hide his sins will not prosper. Many of you might think, why are we not prospering? Well, this is one of, the, one of the things that can make you not prosper. If there's sin in your life and you're hiding your sin, are you hiding? Are you scared to open up? Do you want to be delivered? You must open up. That's the only way to get it into the light, to be completely delivered. You see, the, the devil will also always just function in the dark. Once he is exposed, he is he's surrendered powerless. And he has no authority over you anymore. Yes, your sin might be the biggest shame that you can think of. I've heard many things and I... I, I I, I don't think I've heard it all, but I've heard so many things that I, 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 that I would ne never have thought that I would uh, 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 grasp. How can this be? How can people get involved in these kind of things? The devil is subtle. He's sly. And he will entice people. And once you get them hooked, he will draw you deeper into the mud. So the Bible says that he who conceals or hides his sin will not, will not prosper. But whoever confesses and turns away from his sins will find compassion and mercy. According to Proverbs 28, 13. I'm going to conclude with this. The revival we will soon see will involve the principle, this principle that I've explained this morning. 
And I believe this word should go out. And people should hear this. Because they cannot uh, 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 understand why they can't get rid of their desires and of their sin. And they can't get rid of what is keeping them bound. Here's the key how to get rid of it. Confession. Exposing that your shame. Let me tell you, my brother and sister, there's nothing that you can do or, 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 or confess that Jesus had not borne the cross on your behalf. He took all of your sins. He took all of our sins upon Him on the cross at Calvary. That's what He died for. So that we can be saved. As I've said, the revival we will soon see will involve this principle. And we will see mass deliverances. As in the book of Acts, where they all came and they confessed and they opened up what, they were, what their practices were. My brother and sister in the Lord, if you are saved, but not free, I've just given you the key to deliverance. Get someone that you can trust and reach out to to be delivered. Well, you can contact us. For an appointment, if you need to see us, we are available. And if you have not given your heart to Jesus yet, this is your opportunity to surrender your life to Him. If you are not saved, I call you out of the grave and of the death tomb that you are in. I say to you to come forth and you give the first step, first step to get out of your sin and your situation. You have to step out of that place where you are in. Step out of it. Jesus will call you out, but he will deliver you once you are out of the tomb. He will raise you from the stinges of death in the tomb. But you should get out of that so that he can deliver you. So I call you forth from death into his marvelous light. In the mighty name of Jesus and you, by your own confession, you can say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you have died on the cross for my sin. I'm a sinner. I'm in the uh, rags of death. I need you to resurrect me and to save me and to call me forth and to, to deliver me. So therefore, I step out of the grave, out of the death tomb, and I step out to be saved. And I say, Lord Jesus, deliver me. And once you are out, and you, you, you can contact us and we can pray with you and you can be delivered and you can start to walk in faith and you can start to walk on a righteous path and follow Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I surrender that one now to you. I speak forgiveness. I speak uh, 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 your forgiveness over that person. In the mighty name of Jesus. And every condemnation that has been spoken upon that person, I break it and cast it out and roll it away from that person now in Jesus' name so that he can be raised and step out of the grave. Or she, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can shout it out where you are. Hallelujah, I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. I am delivered. I am delivered. Hallelujah. The death cloth cloth has, uh, I've been unwrapped, and now I am free for him who the Son has set free, is free indeed. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The glory of God is in this place. The glory of God reach out to you wherever you are right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, receive His grace. Receive His strength. Receive His power. In Jesus' name. Rebbe Seteri Bokotandi. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the works of Satan in your life. And I cast out every demon now. I speak to you and say, you in that person that is bound by you, I command you to sluice and let go and go into dry places in Jesus' name. And I tell you, my brother and sister, be delivered. Be free in Jesus' name. Urosi eresa amari ekito uran ali hende este de hoka andele dio baba bekes kanana on terele ha andete for i am moving says the lord i'm on my way for the biggest harvest and the biggest revival because i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and i will save those who are deep into the fire clay into the dungeons of this world i will call them out i will call them out and they will come forth says the lord and i will save them and i will deliver them says god this morning he shall aborn in kasan hallelujah 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 Rebrese to Brusende, Ladrine to Salabangu, Rosambagai. Hallelujah. Out of darkness, out of the death rags, into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. He calls you out, he calls you out, he calls you out. Hallelujah. Ramase ne me celebende. Remene no sande lidicata sanda. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. We give you glory this morning. We give you honor. We give you all of our worship. Hallelujah. For you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. And mighty, you are worthy to be praised. You hung on the cross. Lord Jesus, as I see you standing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Stretching out your hands before us. And you say, come. Come to me. All who are heavy laden, because I will give you rest, says the Lord this morning. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We surrender now. We surrender now, Lord. We surrender now. Hallelujah. And we call forth miracles. Even the dead shall be raised physically as well. And those who are sick will be healed. And I call forth healing. I call forth restoration into that person's life, into that family's life. Lord, in Jesus' name. Your mighty power and your mighty presence is upon me. Lord, and I send it forth out into this uh, on this live stream on this video and recording and every hearer and listener well, will be touched uh, by this in jesus name we give you the glory and we give you the power and the honor lord you are worthy hallelujah let us worship the lord hallelujah with a song let us stand in this place who are here lobro no sende Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the 
to you Lord you are the one that paid the price you are the one that called us forth you are the one that raised us from the deep, uh, deep tombs hallelujah of sin you are the one that saved us and you are the one that delivers us hallelujah and we give you all the glory we, go, we give you all the honor hallelujah hallelujah you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy I can carry on worthy, 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 worthy is the Lord. Hallelujah. We can carry on all, all day because he's worthy, because he's worthy. And the elders and the angels throw down the crowns, the, the crowns before the Lord for 20 hours, four hours, every day, every day. And they call out, holy, 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 holy are the Lord God Almighty. We serve a glorious and a holy God. Let us also walk in his footsteps. Hallelujah. Let us seek his face. Father God, we surrender to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for those. And I call out your blessing upon them. Each one that is listening and accepting this word this morning. I say, be blessed. May his blessing be upon you. May his face shine upon you. May his favor be with you. May he provide in all of your needs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, may you be delivered. May you be set free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are in fact delivered and you are set free. Receive the goodness of God this morning. And be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.